Hi, I'm author Denise Vega. Welcome to another episode of Picture Book Quick Tips. Today is part two of my part five part series on picture book abilities. And this week we're looking at read aloud ability. Uh, let's see, I'm actually coining new words as we go. Read aloud ability. And what does that mean? Well, it means does my book really lend itself to being read aloud? Because as you know, a picture book is uniquely designed to be a shared experience. So there's the read aloud, there's the reader, there's the listener, and there's interactivity between the two most of the time. And that's a lot up to the reader. Sometimes it's up to the actual text of the book. But the read aloud ability comes in so many ways and it really depends on the type of story you're telling, the mood you're creating, the tone, and how different tools that we have at our disposal can be used to elevate that read aloud ability. So for example, uh, your book may be fun and fast paced and engaging. So onomatopoeia like clank and clap, those types of words uh, that are, you know, sound like what they are, buzz, can really enhance your story and are a lot of fun to say out loud and a lot of fun for kids to repeat. So that's something that your story may lend itself to, or maybe not. So you might be looking at alliteration or you might use internal rhyme, consonants or assonance, so many tools that we have at our disposal, uh, repetition to drive a point home or to create a rhythm so that the, the student, or excuse me, the, the listener is anticipating something, maybe a repeated phrase, and that gets them engaged. So all of these tools that we have are wonderful and you don't have to use them all and you may not use any of them depending on the type of story. So really look at that and make sure that those tools are enhancing your story and then also supporting that read aloud ability. Uh, sometimes you might have very straightforward plain language and the pictures are what are really bringing that story to life. Uh, but the language that you use is really vital and not only supports that read aloud ability, but against is going to support the type of story that you're telling. So look for that. Uh, you may ask questions in your story and of course that may engage, engage the reader. It may be a story written that does definitely have reader involvement. Again, that's up to you and your story. So consider all the tools that you have available, thinking about very carefully about your word choices and how they sound. Obviously reading your story aloud is a great way to hear how it sounds and also having someone else read it to you may help you catch things that you may want to fix and change so that you make a, a better reading experience. So that's this week on read aloud ability and the next time I'm with you we'll be talking about a different ability. So I'll see you then.